welcome to today's fireside chat with Jesse. I am joined by Sean Arnone, SVP for Key Equipment Finance. Thanks, Sean, for joining me today. Thanks, Jesse. Pleasure to be here. No, absolutely, man. Um, you know, I, I think we've known each other for probably 14, almost my entire career in equipment yeah. finance. And, um, you know, as I was starting to talk to some industry peers, especially like an RJ that you and I have yep. known for a while, I'm yep. like, got to figure out a way to get Sean on this thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I wanted to be on and I'm glad we were able to arrange it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Fun time. Oh, perfect. So um, for those people who might not know you, Sean, can you just kind of talk about your career in equipment finance to date? Sure. Sure. I think uh, like most, uh, I, I found the industry by accident. I, you know, I was, um, I was running, I was, I owned an old fashioned ice cream hall and dessert shop while I was a senior in college. I uh, thought that was going to be my my career. I thought I was going to own this store and retire someday and sit on a beach. But uh, things happen. I graduated. I was uh, you know 21 years old and not happy about working you know 20 hours a day with school and 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 the bakery and and going back at night. And I knew someone who knew somebody who worked in the leasing industry, and uh, they were looking for somebody to do collections and credit. So calling delinquent accounts from five days to 30 days and. Uh, calling banks and trades. And that's how I started in the industry. I was, uh, you know, the morning spent, you know, calling folks, asking them for their payment. In the afternoons, I was pulling banks and trades and personal credits. And uh, we were uh, <clears throat> selling, you know, Toshiba Strata 12 phone systems and thermal fax machines. That's how long ago it was. And 12 copier minute uh, copiers. So it was, uh, it was a long, <laughs> it was a long time ago. And then from there, I just um, never left. I left actually once. Uh, to do something on my own again and uh they pulled me back in and i've been here ever since so i spent you know time you know of all the big names the cits of the world the everbanks the keys um and i was at key early on like in 99 through 04 left for about 10 years and then been back since 2015. excellent and then uh for the people who might <laughs> i would say the very few people who might not be familiar <laughs> with key equipment finance yep um do you mind just kind of talking about the organization that you work for sean sure sure i uh so i uh i i run the uh, commercial vendor business and um our business and vendor is is broken up into probably three parts we have the the commercial side we have a, a large municipal finance business and then a, a federal finance business um aside from that we have our bank direct group uh, and then we have a specialty finance group. Um, and like I said, my, my group is focused on, you know, the, the, the vendors across the industries that are, you know, pretty common to, to all of us, technology, healthcare, industrial. Um, and we are operating with two kinds of groups right now. We have an enterprise vendor group, which is really dealing with the old um, wholesale, I guess, model that people tend to want to identify it as. And then we have a regional captive group, which is kind of our retail team, feet on the street, assisting manufacturers and resellers. Excellent. And, you know, in my, I think, what, 16 years in equipment finance, I've had the pleasure of having key equipment finance as a customer a couple of times. Yep. Uh, first time was with OSG uh, and, yep. then out, and then at LTI with their Aspire platform. And one of the things I, this is the only, I realize this is the only red dress shirt. That I, have. <laughs> I know I, I'm terrible. Uh, I don't have even I a was, key on. <laughs> like, I'm like, I gotta find something red. I mean, there's some red fire, I suppose, yeah. but um, no, but I always appreciated working on projects with, with your organization. Um, I mean, the culture from Adam down, um, you know, I it's one of the better organizations that's, both run, I guess, and just overall, just working with them. It's, it's just sure. a breath of fresh air. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a culture that, that um, drew me back. You know, I, I was with Key, like I said, early on in my career. Um, I left because I, I did not really want to move. I, I, I born and raised in New Jersey, as you could tell, maybe from the accent. And I've never really, you know, moved within 15 miles of the house I grew up in. So I didn't want to move. I knew if I wanted to progress at that time at Key, I probably had to move. Um, so I, I sought out some other opportunities with some um, some companies that were headquartered here in New Jersey, but I always miss the culture that was built at Key. And since Adam took over, that culture really has been refined. It's it's a culture promoting people to to question and to participate and to be able to ask questions. And there's no one you know gonna gonna make you feel bad about yourself. Everybody listens, and it's 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 a really great place to work. It really is. I, uh, and, and since you brought up the accent, 
I, th- I go back to the collections thing and what a better yeah. accent, but Hey, you owe me money. <laughs> like nothing like the yeah. Northeast guy, like asking oh, for yeah. money with your accent. It's fantastic. I'm sure I'll get yelled at for saying that. But anyway, <laughs> it's just fun. Nah, it's really <laughs> it. <laughs> so as far as, um, you know, this COVID, hopefully post COVID world that we're moving into, like yeah. how did that impact um, you, especially being in Jersey and, you know, I know you guys have an office in Albany, but that's more yep. of the tech side yeah. but not getting out to Colorado or going and mm-hmm. seeing your vendor like how did that impact um yeah you know you it it was rough Jess I and mean, when I tell you we you know I was used to being on the road at least a week a month so I would spend you know three four days in Colorado and then spend another two or three days somewhere else um and when that hit and I, I never forget I was um, actually Adam came to town uh, we had a meeting in New York City. Uh, it was like right middle of beginning of March. And um, he was going back. And two days later, I was going to fly out to see a customer. And, and we got grounded that day. And it was just like a shock to the system because, <clears throat> you know, I, I love to visit clients. I love to visit partners. That's the thing that that makes us tick. And I and I love being in headquarters. I love to see, you know, the team and, and, and you know, have some fun and, and say hello to everyone. So it was it was rough. And we had to figure out ways just to kind of connect. And, you know, obviously with, with WebEx and Zoom and everything else, we're, we're trying to do the best we can. And we've been utilizing even, I mean, mostly for internal stuff, you know, some, you know, some fun happy hours to do and you know, some, you know, cocktails in a, in a box that get delivered. And we could kind of just have that camaraderie and that fun again. And we're trying to do that also with some clients. So it's, it's, it was rough though. It's, it still is a challenge. And I'm hoping that this gets lifted soon, you know. Now, how... Um... How long did it take you before you started turning on your camera? Uh, it took a while. You know, I, if, at first I had uh, all this tape over the camera, so I had to figure out how to get all that that sticky stuff off of it. <laughs> and then I had to peel the tape, and then I wound up actually just uh, <laughs> buying a webcam to make it easier and just kind of, I could turn it around and turn it off as much as I wanted to. But it was, you forgot, you know, you forgot to put the camera on. You forgot, what was I wearing? You forgot, oh my God, am I scratching my eye? Am I, you know... My, is my cat jumping around you know what's going on here so there's it a was, random it dog was, yeah. like it just opened up a door in, yeah see what happens here. so i i apologize i mean that's yeah just, no it's okay. uh, that's, that's that's and that's, you just yep. summed up covid yep. right there right? <laughs> it's like come on man like, yeah all right yeah. so anyhow um we got visited by uh this is arctic he's uh, oh, a wow. malmute siberian husky okay yes wow. buddy i okay <laughs> <laughs> That is great. So, sorry, sorry. Um, that's, no, that's, that's scripted, great. I love it. Just it. Happens. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I was the same way. I mean, I was on the road probably once or tw- at least once a month, if not twice. And you sit there and it's like, okay, when you come home, you just want to decompress because when you're out on the road, all you're doing is taking people out and yeah. doing all the entertainment. So last thing you want to do is be on a camera. And then yeah. it's like, for me as a salesperson that had been in sales my entire career, how do you make yourself relevant to that yep. vendor or to that potential customer? And it's, while this is yeah. never going to replace a permanent handshake, at least it kind of sets, you know, you apart from other people that, you know, aren't going to yeah. invest that time. So, yeah. And you know what I preached to everyone that, that works with me and, and, and even some of the folks that were looking for advice, I just said, you know what, call your, your partners, your clients, your customers, and talk about what's going on and with the weather, talk about what's going on with their kids. You know, you don't have to always call about a deal. It just makes it a little bit more personal because when we do get together for a dinner or we do get together, you know, for a cocktail or, you know, a, a meal, we're, we're, we're talking about other things other than just saying, where's the deal when, you know, what's the pricing. So you got to kind of mimic that, that behavior somehow, some way. No, and that's a, and that's a great point. And one of the, the focal points of why I do these here is yep. so people can hear that from an industry veteran like yourself um, where it's like, do something that someone else isn't going to do. Like, it's not just about, like you said, it's not just about the sale. It's call someone when it's not there because if, and when things happen and nothing is perfect, they're going to say, okay, Hey, yeah. He called me that one time just to talk about my kid or whatever else. And it makes a difference. Oh, it does. It does. And I love that you called me an industry veteran and not an old guy. So that's a good well, thing. Well, I was thank actually content. I was trying to figure out a way where it's like, that didn't sound like you're old, but like, thank you. For- thanks. <laughs> I mean, look, oh, look at me, man. I, mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I turned 40 in August, well, but I have enough gray hair like, where it's like, I'm a lot older. So 
Um, but, <laughs> sorry about that. That's great. <laughs> but, um, you know, so anyhow, I mean, I, I personally struggle with some of that stuff. I mean, I know we've gone to some dinners in our time it's, sure. oh, yeah. and it's like, you sit back and it's like, you look at time hop and you look at pictures on your phone and you're just like, okay, when's this going to go back? When's this going to go back? And then like, I traveled in October of last year. And if that's what travel was like, I don't want to travel because yeah, half the stuff's closed. Yeah like some staple restaurants. I mean, I'm sure yeah. you're in just, I'm sure you're part of Jersey. Yeah. You have some old school places that yeah. just didn't survive. Yeah. And it's that's sad. That's, on... yeah, that's what we're, you know, that's, that's the world we're in right now. It's, it's true. You know, I mean, I think of the, the, the good times, I, same thing. I look at photos, you know, us sharing a seafood tower or a sushi boat or a nice that, glass of wine. Go. I mean, those are the great days uh, and they'll be back. I, I know yeah. for sure they'll be back, but I do worry that, some of the old stomping grounds that we may have visited um, might not survive this. And that's the sad part that comes about with all this whole thing. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, we just got to all be safe and be happy and, and, you know, we'll get there. We're definitely going to get there. That's for sure. We're at the, yeah. we're at the, we're getting the lights at the end of the tunnel. I think. So you have a condo. Yep. yep. You're in New Jersey. Yep. How is your wife handling you? at home all the time without traveling. Um, you know, it's funny because she always went into an office and um, right. and right before the pandemic started, maybe uh, probably six months, she started a new role. Um, so pandemic hits within, you know, maybe three or four months that she started five months and, and she's home now and she doesn't have an office set up. And I do have an office set up. So I'm lucky because, you know, for the last 20 years of my career, I've pretty much been mobile and uh, traveling. So um, we, 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 we figured it out. Um, we also have a 17 year old who's, who's uh, doing school from home and has senioritis and um, just wants to leave for college. And um, we're juggling, but it, 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 so far so good. Everyone is still healthy and, and no one's, no one's uh, you know, locked anywhere. So everything's good. We're good. <laughs> well, I just know it's kind of one of those things where, you know, we finished this house, um, yep. you know, so Brooke has her own office. I too have been fortunate where I've, you know, been able to work from, from home for the last, yep. I want to say 10 plus years. But even when her and I are both home, it's like, oh my God, like I can hear her conversation. She can hear mine. Yeah. What are you doing? I don't hear you on the phone. No, it means I'm still doing things like calm yeah. down. So I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyhow. Traveling, yeah. traveling is going to start up soon enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's coming. <laughs> so when is um? Uh, so I guess you probably don't have another trip because you used to go across the yeah. pond at least once a year. Yeah, we uh we would go. My, you know, we'd love to go over to Europe, and we were going to do something for my daughter's graduation. That was her wish. She didn't want to have a like we did for her 16th. She didn't want to have a, a graduation party. She wanted to go to to Italy, and um, we were going to do that. But it's just it, you just can't plan anything right now, and and um. So we're gonna we're gonna reserve that 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 trip for another time, and uh, we'll just do some local stuff. So it's um, we'll go down to shore, we'll go out, you know, we'll go out east, it, you know, we'll do the typical Jersey stuff that you do. <laughs> yeah, we had a cruise last year that it was Barcelona down through oh, yeah. Italy and then back yep. up, but obviously that got canceled. And then I still think we have one in early October to Greece. Oh wow, that's great! I've never I've never been there, but yep. it's also kind of one of those things where I think I might just move that just a little yeah. further just to not worry about dealing yeah with you know at this point. the worst thing you want to do is be able to go go and everything is closed or you can't really see or do anything and that's you know that's not or, fun. or be on a cruise ship and you're stuck and then there's a documentary yeah. and then there's jesse <laughs> hanging out the balcony of a cruise ship saying hey get me out of here i could just i could just see what that would yeah, be like. that, that could happen that could happen yeah <laughs> so um, one thing I always ask people, Sean, who take the time to uh, meet with me on here is a little fun fact about yourself. A fun fact about myself. Um, you know, I don't know if I have any, uh, anything that I could share actually on, on, a, on a video that I would want. In, in, I was, in- I was, I was going to say, like, just be, be mindful. Uh, this is going to go on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, this so. is going to be yeah. on forever. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I, I guess, that, you know, judging by, you know, judging by me, I mean, I, I, the fun, most fun fact is I, I really enjoy kind of being home. Uh, you would think that I, I want to be out and, you know, and traveling. I love being in my house. I love being home and, uh, you know, just doing the fun things. You know, I love to cook, uh, you know, I do get out and play some golf. I enjoy that, but I think I'm, I'm, people think because of how, 
Jersey and loud and everything that I'm out and I really love to be home. I really do. So it's, uh, it's probably, I don't know if it's a fun fact, but it's a fact. What's, well, what's your favorite dish to make? Um, you know, obviously I, I enjoy most, most Italian cooking. And, you know, when I was, I was a little kid, my, uh, my grandmother made the best meatballs ever. And, um, and it's, she's still, you know, she's still in my head of when we used to make the meatballs and how to, you know, you didn't use breadcrumbs, you used, you know, stale bread and just the things she put in my head. I love to do that. And I am sad to report that my wife actually makes better meatballs than I do. And I always thought I was the meatball king. And uh, it's just not there anymore. So, but I, I love making what we call Sunday gravy. You might call it sauce. There's a big fight all the time. And sauce is a gravy. We call it gravy. You know, it's uh, so I love making uh, Sunday gravy. But I mean, I'm, I'm a bad Italian. Thing. I use <laughs> pasta sauce. Sorry. Like, <laughs> well, there's a lot of things. Yes, there's, a, there's, there's, a lot of things <laughs> there's a lot of things that I started to make, like cheese and stuff myself. Yep. Uh, pasta sauce. I sit there. I look at the paste. I look at everything that goes into it. I'm kind of like <laughs> ragu. Like, just like, like here oh, you yeah. go. Like you're I'm gonna sorry. kill me, Jesse. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a bad Italian when it comes to that. Uh, you know, sometimes you could doctor it up and make it taste okay. I just throw some like you know oregano on it. And people are like this sauce is great. I'm like it's good. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, but um, you know, it just. So of all the different banks, I guess, and equipment finance, um, Sean, yep. um, you know, why, why key equipment finance? I know we've touched on a few things. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, um, I think it's the people that drew me back. Um, you know, when I first worked here, um, I, I came out of the, the copier world. I was a copier lease guy. I worked for a captive. Um, you had to get the deal. You know, things were you know, easy. Uh, and I replied to an ad that said business developer. And I had no idea what that meant. I'm like, business developer, what is that? You know, and um, I got called into Manhattan to meet with a, a gentleman. His name was Bill Bridges, who I still carry his business card in my wallet to this day, because I felt he gave me my break, my big break in the equipment leasing industry. Hmm. And that, the, the rest was history. I kind of, I was at Key, like I said, for five years doing global BD. And back then we were, we were a global company. We were in Europe, we were in Asia, we were in, you know, Canada and the U.S. And um, that's how I kind of learned the business, learned business development, learned program management. And then I left, um, typically because I didn't want to move, but you know, also when you're young, you're also chasing title, you're trying to chase more money. And that's also advice I give everyone. Don't, it's, that doesn't always pan out. Chasing title and money is not a good thing. If you find a good culture and you find good people, it'll all come together. It will. And that's kind of what key was. So I was happy to come back. I did you know, I did bounce around like, you know, I think we talked about it a while ago. It's, you know, I think I had in the 10 years I was away from key or 12 years I was away from key. I think I had six jobs. So, it, it, you know, that was bouncing around and uh, some of them were because there was tough times. You know, we had some downturns during that, which was rough. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just so happy to be back because of the people and because of the culture and because of just, you know, the, the, the team I get to work with. Well said. I, yeah. I agree with you 100 um, percent. You know, the, the whole money. I mean, someone once asked me, what if the money wasn't there? Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, gone tomorrow. Yeah. And that's a, it's an interesting, yeah. uh, it's an interesting dynamic. That's for sure. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, you, you know, things you have in your, in your career or your reputation and, and, you know, the type of person you are and, you know, and even how you, you enter a company and how you leave a company is great ways to do that. And, uh, and people are going to come and go and, you know, we're, we're all human. We're going to do that. Um, but, you know, I was happy that Key welcomed me back and it's been a, it's been a great, you know, six years so far and hope to have another, you know, at least another 10. And then, you know, my daughter will be on her own and be able to go and maybe I'll be able to retire. I was going to say, well, you got well, this year <laughs> and then you got uh, four years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, and she signed up for a five-year program at the college she's going to. So it's, uh, yeah. So, you know, she wants to get the master's and the undergrad all done at once. So is that where you time. call up the college and you're like, what are you doing? Why, <laughs> Why do you like, offer this? Yes. Why? Like, what is, what if they don't want it in three yeah. years? Like, come on, give me that one yeah. year off potentially. <laughs> Maybe she'll be really smart and get it done quicker. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Same price, same price yes. though. Cause they charge you for credit. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome, Sean. Well, thank you again for taking the time out of your day to, um, to chat with me here. Um, I can't wait to, you know, to see you again, another event, hopefully the coming up this August. Um, yeah. and hopefully it was before then too.
So yeah, no, this is great, Jesse. Thanks for having me, and uh, thank you for doing this. I think you're doing a good job for the industry, and this is great to get uh, get just different perspectives out there. So yeah, hope to see you in August, maybe sooner. We'll see. All right, man. Have a good day, Sean. Take care. Take care. Thanks, Jesse. All right. Bye.